In this activity, we're going to return to our constant companion, the simple spring mass damper, or you can say it at whatever order you want, mass spring damper. Um, and our interest here is to apply all of the techniques that we have learned about the Laplace transform in order to convert this differential equation that we've already now learned how to model. We're going to convert that into um, the Laplace domain by applying the Laplace transform to that whole equation. And then ultimately, we'll not in this activity, but ultimately then we'll be able to solve that differential equation. So uh, we're going to take that first step, which is to take the Laplace transform of this and solve for the Laplace transform of Y. So that's capital Y of S. Remember that you've got three different uh, things that are causing motion. So you've got the two initial conditions, uh, the initial position and the initial velocity. And then you also have a possibly forcing function u of t that's being applied. So go ahead and derive this and then we'll use this as an explanation to lead into the more generic solution of differential equations using Laplace transform. So go ahead and pause the video and take a stab at writing down uh, the Laplace transform version of this differential equation and then solving for y of s. So as I mentioned in the intro, uh, this is really about uh, taking what we've learned about the Laplace transform and, um, and bringing it to bear on solving ODEs, so differential equations. And so I'll try to be rather explicit about each step that we're taking. So we're going to apply the Laplace transform to both sides. That's simply just like doing any sort of um, operation, so taking the der derivative of both sides, taking the integral of both sides. Um, here we're taking all the Laplace transform of both sides of the equation. So now, going from this second line to the third line here, this is linearity. This is the idea that linearity allows us to separate each of these terms. So in this case, we have these three different terms that are in the sum on the left-hand side. And linearity of the Laplace transform allows us to get to this equation here, where we pulled the scalar coefficients, the mass, um, the damping coefficient and the spring constant out, and now we're just taking the Laplace transform of each of these, these different functions, y double dot, y dot, and y. So capital Y of S is exactly the definition as being the Laplace transform of little y of t. So that's almost by definition, um, because again, y of S and y of t are things that we don't know. So the best we can do is, is represent it as in its Laplace form in the Laplace domain. Um, the value and the importance of being able to express this derivative, the Laplace transform of this derivative, um, is the fact that we change that derivative into um, something that's in terms of y of s again. And so this is where we start talking about changing from a, an ODE or differential equation into an algebraic equation. And this is where that happens because now there's no more derivatives, it's just essentially adding terms of y of s together. So this gives us s times capital Y of s, um, and this actually is a typo. This should be a minus uh, y zero. And so that allows us to, uh, to express the derivative term. The second derivative term, then we get this second uh, factor of s, so we get s squared times capital Y of s, and then we subtract away s times the initial condition in position minus the initial condition in velocity. All right, and so that then, once you plug that in and you're going to solve for capital Y of s and bring all the other terms to the other side, that's what gives you this equation. So if you need to see those intermediate steps, just stop and, uh, and solve that out for yourself. So we're going to solve all, put all of these Y of s terms together and then that's going to be essentially this denominator, ms squared plus bs plus k. That's why we're dividing it, and that's why it appears in the denominator on all three terms over here. And so the reason why I've kind of factored it this way is that this tells me the term that's related to the input. So we didn't exactly talk about this, but remember the Laplace transform of the input is simply just capital U of s. And so you would need to specify what that would be. Would that be a step function, a ramp? sinusoid or uh, whatever so that is this is the term due to the sign uh, to this uh, input u of t 
that's that first term. And then we also have terms that are due to any initial conditions that we have. And so we can actually separate those out into three different terms. And so one of the things that should kind of ring a bell from differential equations um, a couple semesters ago is the fact that you can separate the complete solution into something that is called the particular solution and something that is the homogeneous solution. The homogeneous solution is something that's due entirely to initial conditions. And the particular solution is something that's due to no initial conditions, but only to some sort of forcing function or an input. And so um, in differential equations, you would often solve these same kinds of equations here. Um, and you would know that you could separate that into a piece due to the homogeneous behavior and due to the particular behavior. And so we're seeing that also in the Laplace transform of, the, uh, of this differential equation. So again, this just goes into a little bit more detail there. So here, when we talked about this from the mathematical perspective, the solutions that are the homogeneous solutions are the solutions of the differential equation when there is no forcing function. So it's simply just what the system does when there is zero forcing. The particular solution is what happens when you add a particular form here. And typically, um, if you remember, these have a particular um, form that comes simply from this equation. And the particular solution oftentimes has a form that's due to what exactly this is. So again, whether this is a step function or whether this is a sinusoid or so on, the solutions take on a different form. But in general, and again, this is due to the linearity of the original differential equation, this, um, this sum is then uh, the total solution. So again, the total solution can be broken up into these two different pieces. And so in everything that we're going to do in this course, um, oftentimes we will talk about something called the transfer function. And the transfer function really just means that it is a Laplace domain mapping from one signal to another. If we don't use it in a particular context, so if, if I don't tell you anything more than that, I just say the transfer function, then what I really mean is, I, I mean, what is this rational uh, ratio of polynomials that sits in terms of and expresses how the input gets mapped into the output? how some forcing function gets mapped into something we observe. Um, in general, the transfer function, again, can really be anything that's referred to this kind of Laplace transform mapping. So technically, this term, you could talk about it as being the transfer function from the initial condition y0 to the uh, observable output y. So you can think about, again, transfer function can mean all these different things. But if I say it without any context, it really means this particular one that expresses the input-output relationship of that differential equation, that, that system. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to better understand how to, how to use these transfer functions, these ones as well as the ones for the initial condition, in order to actually solve to ultimately get little y of t. So little y of t, that's the time domain solution of this time domain differential equation that we had here. All of the in-between steps that we do with the Laplace transform are merely kind of in-between steps to help us get there. And so we take the Laplace transform to deal with something that no longer has differential equations in it, it just has algebra. Um, and then what we do is we rearrange this, we solve for y of s, we substitute in what u of s is, and now the interesting thing is then to apply the inverse Laplace transform to go from that function y of s that represents the signal y of t in the Laplace domain and take it back to little y of t. So what we're going to talk about now is the fact that when we have to do this inverse Laplace transform, we would like to have it in, in terms of things that we can easily find in our lookup table that we've been building. And a lot of times, once you get quite a bit of mess going on here, that doesn't appear in your lookup table. And so we're going to use 
something you've seen before but possibly forgotten, partial fractions, in order to break those up and get it into a form that's easy to find in your Laplace transform tables. So that's what's up next.